Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll cover a new concept in order to solve our definite or indefinite integrals, which may seem complex by using a very interesting twist to change our definite or indefinite integrals into easier forms, the forms that we already know an indefinite integral for. And that process is also known as substitution. So we'll now cover a concept of solving a definite or indefinite integral using substitution. So the basic idea about substitution is when we have complex functions in our indefinite or definite integrals, we generally identify the pattern in those complex problems and extract those individual complex functions in our indefinite integral. And when we have extracted all those individual complex functions, we do some manipulations to our integral in order to simplify our integral into the best form possible for which we already know an integral for. I know it may seem complex when you hear it for the first time, but we'll go over this example that you see on the screen, which uses the concept of substitution. And you'll clearly notice that it's sometimes very easy to use substitution in order to simplify our indefinite or definite integrals and calculate their values. And there is also one more important point about substitution that will help you identify if you have to use substitution in order to calculate your indefinite integral or it can be done in other ways possible. So there is one approach, there is one hint that you'll see in the question, which will force you to think upon solving this question or solving this integral by using substitution and not using any other methods. And the trick or the catch about it is, whenever you have an integral, whenever you have to solve an indefinite or definite integral of an expression, and based on that expression, if you have one function, and the derivative of that function together, you will most likely use substitution in this case. So let us go over this example. How would I know that in this question, I have to use substitution. So you again have to rely on the trick that I told at the first, that whenever you'll have in your expression, in your integral expression, a function, and the derivative of that function together, you'll most likely use substitution in this case. And you can clearly see in this example, in this question, that we have a function which is log t, and we know that the derivative of log t is one over t, right? So we have log t as well, and we have one over t as well, right? If we simplify this expression and cancel this out, it would be one by t times cos of log t, right? So that is why we have a function and we also have the derivative of that function attached to our integral expression. So that would give me a confirmation that I have to use substitution in order to make my indefinite integral simpler. And how would we use that substitution? So this is the time when we'll learn about how we would use that substitution. So the first part about solving these type of substitution problems is to identify your function for which you already have the derivative of that function attached into your integral expression. And in this case, we have clearly identified that the function for which we already have the derivative in the integral expression as well, and that function is log of t. So let's suppose that function is denoted by u, and it is log of t. And now I know that when I differentiate my u with respect to t, it would give me 1 by t, right? And now if I try to shift my dt over to the other side, my du becomes 1 by t dt, right? And now you'll clearly notice in this expression that instead of log of t, I can use u, and instead of 1 by t dt, which is over here, I can use du. And when you'll do both of these substitutions, you'll clearly notice that the form that you'll get after substituting everything inside will be a complete better form of solving a indefinite or definite integral. But there is also one important point in this case, since in this case you are calculating a definite integral, you also have to adjust your endpoints based on the relation that you have. For example, in this case, since we are varying our t from 1 to pi, our t varies from 1 to pi. But if we substitute everything in this expression according to u, will have to adjust the endpoints according to u because you see one thing that when we'll substitute 1 by t dt, it will change to du 
So that is why if you'll have du in your integral expression, you'll vary your endpoints based on the u function. So when based on this relation, based on this relation that you have, you'll clearly notice that when my t is equal to 1, my u is log of 1, right, which is 0. So when your t is equal to 1, your u is equal to 0. And similarly, in the other case, when your t is equal to pi for the upper endpoint, your u is log of pi, right? So that is why when you'll change your expression from dt to du, you will use these endpoints. So the lower endpoint will then become u equals 0 and the upper endpoint will then become u equals log of pi. So let's do all those conversions based on what we calculated so far. And now we know that, let's write the integral first. So the original integral was integral 1 to pi cos of log of t upon t dt. And if we simplify it further down, it would become 1 by pi cos of log t times 1 by t dt, right? And now let's substitute everything based on what we calculated so far in this video. So we know that we'll change every occurrence of log t with u, we'll change the occurrence of 1 by t dt with du. And based on, since we are using du in this case, we'll vary our endpoints based on u values. So let's do all those conversions. First of all, the cos of log of t would become cos of u, right? 1 by t dt will become du and now your endpoints will become u equals 0 to u equals log of pi. u equals 0 to u equals log of pi. And did you notice one thing that by only using substitution, we have changed our definite integral into a much better form possible? Because in this case, it becomes very easy to calculate the integral of cos of u which is just sine of u. And since in this case we are calculating the definite integral, so we'll use the endpoints in order to answer our question as we did in the previous videos as well, right? So we know that the integration of cos u du is sine u and based on the endpoints, the answer would be first sine of log of pi minus sine of zero, right? You will notice in this case that I skipped some steps and that was only done because we covered these concepts in our previous videos. So the final answer, since sine of 0 is 0, the final answer would be sine of log of pi. And that is our final answer. And this answer, this final answer was calculated by only using substitution. And you realized how easy it became to calculate the final answer using substitution and not evaluating the definite integral of this expression by the regular methods which we were following in the last video. So that is why sometimes in order to solve your definite or indefinite integrals, substitution plays a very important role in simplifying your integrals. And the catch or the trick to know if you want to use substitution in order to solve a definite or indefinite integral is whenever you will find a function and you'll also find the derivative of that function attached to the same expression, you will most likely have to use substitution in order to answer that definite or indefinite integral. So that's it for this video. Feel free to comment down in this video if you have any doubts or concerns. Follow the channel in order to get notified about the other videos that I'll be uploading. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Take care.